What's going on guys? So today we're going to be doing a recipe that is pretty close to both mine and Josh's heart. Yeah, a little story time for you guys. When we were in middle school, we had a PE teacher, a really nice guy. He used to invite us over to his house, make some toaster strudels for us, and tell us how much he cared about us. Yeah, it was uh, kind of weird when you think about it. In hindsight, I guess. Guys, we have a really special video for you today. We have a American delicacy that is close to our heart. Uh, it's a puff pastry, it's a little sandwich, it's a toaster strudel. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, so this is a really easy recipe with only about three components. So we're gonna get some berries into our pan, try not to be an idiot and get the plastic in there. We're gonna get those going with 125 grams of sugar and let that start to cook down. We're gonna start this off on somewhat of a low heat. We're just gonna get those berries and the sugars combined. As the sugar starts to melt, it's gonna pull out the moisture from the berries. I don't like to cook this for too long because I don't want the berries to break down too much. So I'm just gonna stir them nice and easily, trying not to destroy them in the process. So as our berries are cooking down, we're gonna get our cornstarch slurry ready, which is just gonna be an equal part of cornstarch and water. Gonna get that going into a bowl and make sure you're using cold water to dissolve because cornstarch dissolves in cold water. Gonna use that to thicken up our jam. Now we can add in our slurry. Cornstarch activates while boiling, so you wanna make sure you add that in while stirring. You're gonna see it thicken up immediately. We're gonna look for a thicker consistency here. It's gonna be easier to fill up our pastry as well as the lemon juice is gonna thin it out a little bit. That is the consistency we're looking for right there. That is going to be perfect once it's cooled down. We're going to place our jam to the side, put it into a bowl and let it cool down completely in the fridge. It's going to make it easier to fill up your pastry. Now we're going to get our pastry dough out. This is a store bought pastry dough. You could make your own if you like, but if you have that much time, we probably should look into helping you some other ways. Now we're going to pull it apart and cut it into three sections. They're about the size of a Pop-Tart, but you can kind of play with it as you want, but you want them to be big enough to really stuff them. Now you're gonna end up with three bottoms and three tops, and I don't mean to get sexual here, but of course we're gonna put them together. Now here's where things really start to get good. We're gonna construct our pastry. Grab one of the bottom pieces and get a heaping spoonful of the jam that you've made. Put it right in the center and then get the top piece and put it on top of it. Now you're going to push from the outside inward so that you get rid of any of the air that's stuck inside the pastry so you don't have any issues when you're baking it. Now we used a fork to seal the outside of our pastry. Here's us finishing it. Then you're going to take the roller that we used to cut the pastry and just trim the edges. You just want to get the very edge of the pastry cleaned up and it'll make it perfectly square. Now that is what our finished product should be looking like. So we're gonna get that onto a lined sheet tray. We're using a Silpat, but a piece of parchment paper will work just fine. So we're gonna brush the top with a little bit of just egg yolk, and then we're gonna to top it off with a little bit of granulated sugar. And then we're gonna let these hang out in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes. But if you have the time, I like to let them hang out for at least two hours in the fridge. That's gonna help the puff pastry cook and puff up nicely. So while the pastries are hanging out in the fridge, we're gonna get going on our icing. We're making a cream cheese icing, so I'm taking about four ounces of cream cheese, a quarter cup of milk, and then a little splash of vanilla extract. I think the easiest way to do this is with a blender. It's the best way to get the cream cheese dissolved into the icing. So now that we've got that blended up, we're gonna add in one cup of our powdered sugar and then hit it with the blender again. Sorry about the wonky angles. We're new at this if you can't tell. After that, you should have a nice and beautiful cream cheese frosting. Now that they've been in the fridge for about two hours, we're gonna put them in a 375 degree oven for about half an hour. Go watch some TV to distract ourselves from our meaningless lives. Now here comes these golden brown puff pastries. We're gonna to top it off with this frosting that we made. Look how nice that looks. And now it's time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. It's delicious. Isn't it nice to have a toaster strudel where you can add as much icing as you want? That's the real key. That's a huge perk. Yeah. When we were kids, sometimes we would run out of icing packets early because we'd kind of double up. Great. Now you go on a date, you put one of these in your pocket, you pull it out at the end of the night, she's gonna freak out. She's gonna freak out. Ooh, that's hot. 
All right, I don't think we'll make you guys suffer through watching us uh, eat the rest of this, but thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Try this one at home. Let us know what you think.